Hello, um, Chairman Parker and members of the Board of Environmental Protection. My name is Andrew Morgan. I'm a resident of Topsom, Maine, and I am a graduate research assistant at the School of Forest Resources at the University of Maine. Uh, as you mentioned, I am testifying today neither for nor against the proposed Chapter 200 rules. My intent today is first to make it more publicly known of the research that Dr. Sandra Day, Euriste Stone, and I are currently conducting on Maine residents' perceptions of metallic mineral mining in Maine. I've gathered qualitative data that includes all the testimonies that have been given at public hearings since 2012, and this hearing will be included in that. Every newspaper article on this topic in the Bangor Daily News, Portland Press Herald, and others, including online comments, and data from stakeholder websites. We are also in the final stages of a mail survey sent to a random sample of Maine residents. These qualitative and survey data will allow us to determine Maine residents' acceptance level of metallic mineral mining in the state. Additionally, we will determine the barriers that might prevent this, the acceptance of mining. One of our main goals of this study is to present our findings to policymakers and the state government so that they can be as informed as possible of Maine residents' attitudes towards this topic outside of these public hearings and thereby be able to address any concerns in the proposed rules or statutory as far as the legislature goes. The results of the study will be presented to the state legislature during the, this upcoming session. Additionally, results will be disseminated to interesting state, interested stakeholders and will also be available at the following website, umaine.edu slash Mitchell Center. Though I am in the preliminary stages of data analysis and therefore do not have any results to report from our study at this time, I do want to present some key findings from another study that may be of use to this board and the legislature. Should these proposed rules be ratified in the state legislature this upcoming session, the Maine Department of Environmental Protection will have the ability to issue permits for metallic mines and as they have clarified that they already have that authority. However, an increasingly important concept for the mining industry is what is known as a social license to operate. A social license refers to the acceptance or approval of mining operations by local communities and other stakeholders who can affect the profitability of those operations. We can clearly see within the proposed rules an example of how a social license or lack thereof could impact the profitability of a mining operation. In subchapter one, number four, related to other rules, it says this section applies to all exploration, advanced exploration and mining activities. Compliance with the provisions of this chapter, the permit to mine, and the act does not be prevent, prevent a municipality from regulating or controlling mining or reclamation activities, and C, prevent a municipality from regulating the routes, hours, and weights of transportation of ore, rock, tailings, and other mining related materials on public streets and roads in order to protect the public health, safety, and welfare. This example demonstrates even after rule changes go into effect and if a mine is permitted by DEP, a municipality could still greatly affect the success of that mine. Thus, if the local municipality is opposed to the mine, then they could create restrictions that could neg negatively affect its profitability. The lack of a social license can affect mining profitability in other ways, such as protests, public outrage, creating a negative image, lawsuits, etc. cetera. Um, I'd like to divert from my written comments for a minute and thank uh, the director of the geologic survey for bringing up the Eagle Mine. Um, I have found that that is also, in my own estimation, a model mine, but you may notice to the extent to which they've had to go to um, appease the local community and work out with the local community, the uh, debates with the local community was mentioned. They've um, instituted lots of other things to um, avoid the negative impact of the boom and bust cycle. So they have initiatives with the local economy and 
promoting economic development that goes beyond, beyond their own mining activities. Just in, as an example of the extent to which mining companies now need to go to uh, secure a social license to operate. Back to my written comments. In a 2015 research article, researchers Aaron Zhang and Karen Moffat studied public acceptance of mining activities in Australia and found that residents were not willing to compromise their environmental concerns even if they recognized that mining created many benefits. They also found that confidence in governance structures played a significant role in re residents' level of acceptance. Environmental concerns were offset and level of acceptance increased if residents perceived that there were strong regulations and the government had the ability to hold the mining industry accountable. Conversely, when governance was perceived to be weak, acceptance level significantly decreased, even for those residents with low environmental concerns. If these findings are correct, then counterintuitively, strict and clear regulations that reflect the values of the residents of Maine can actually lead to more profitable, mine, profitable mining operations and larger economic benefits to Maine and its communities. Strong regulations can also mitigate the strong tensions and lengths of debates between communities and, com and mining companies. I urge the board and the other state government entities involved in this process to thoughtfully consider the negative implications of vague language and loose or loose standards on both our cherished natural resources, human health, and also the profitability of potential mining activities. Thank you for your time. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have.